think we're ready to go. That was a great song. It really was. Yeah. What's the title of that? That's what I thought. Okay. All right. Second Peter chapter three. Let's all stand. And uh, maybe we can remember something after we teach this, because that's what it's really all about. Second Peter chapter three, verses one and two. Now Peter is getting ready to leave the earth soon after this writing by his uh, execution by the government. But he says this second letter or epistle is called, somebody said uh, when they were learning the Bible, they thought well, uh, an epistle was the, the uh, wife of an apostle. <laughs> the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I what? Stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. So Lord, we thank you for Peter's going away message. And uh, we'll be with him not too long from now, all of us. And uh, we thank you for the thousand-year reign of Christ, where we'll all again work together uh, for Jesus Christ as the ruler. So we ask you now to bless, and may we allow you to stir up our pure minds by way of remembrance. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Let's be seated. So that would be a title, Stir Up Our Pure Minds. And it's by the way you do it is by re remembrance. Some people are too busy to try to remember anything or, or meditate or just think on the past and or, or plan for the future. They just, they, they're stirred up, but not their pure mind is not stirred up. Their carnal mind is stirred up, but not their pure mind. And uh, you know as well as I do, we're easily led astray by our own forgetfulness. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah. By just forgetting stuff. How many remember all your math tables now from grade school? Yeah. Well, one or a few. How many remember all the rules of the English language and grammar? Duh. You can't because uh, Glenda says he's blaming his wife. She does. And, uh, I, you know, somebody texted me the other day. I, I had to sit there and say, what is an OFD? And, uh, or whatever the initials that were, they, you know, I had to figure out what they were saying because of the younger generation. Well, anyway, we lose a lot by just forgetting stuff. Now, some of us super seniors are, are losing it, right? And uh, that's the easy way to put it. But Peter was always trying to keep the pure mind stirred up and always thinking on the things of God, lest that we might forget what the Bible really teaches on every subject. And that's why I'm glad we use the Bible here. I'm glad Brother Sowers goes into depth. Has it, I think you've got the next study is going to be in doctrine. I believe it is. So he's going to delve into the depths of the doctrines of Jesus Christ in, in the, the real Bible. So he says we accomplish this pure mind stirring. How many uh, put creamer in your coffee or tea or you know you just dump it in and start drinking it no you stir it up don't you so it's, it's a, it has a consistency uh, about it and uh, I mean if you're making a stew you dump a can of this and a can of that and a can of that and you cook it and you, and you never stir it what do you got well you don't know what you're going to get but if you stir it you know it's consistent and then it comes out and all the flavors come out mixed together. So that's what he was trying to keep them thinking. I remember meeting an old, almost 90 year old evangelist years ago in Ohio 
and uh, he, his message was just the word think. And uh, he said when he was in the Navy on that big uh, ship he was on, I think it was a submarine, and uh, every door had written on there, think, before you open that door, think. Then he said, and that taught me as a young man, uh, make sure I'm thinking before I do something not just doing something out of, uh, in other words, be proactive, not reactive. People that are reactive don't think about what they're about to say, what they're about to do, what they are about to uh, try to accomplish. Well, there's three things we want to see that we must remember uh, in the scriptures. So go to 1 Peter chapter 1. So by way of remembrance, we stir up our pure mind. When we don't do that, we stir up our carnal mind with uh, busyness and other uh, things that will hurt us. So first we see the three things to remember and be mindful of. First we need to remember that God has several things reserved, reservations, and the Bible tells us about things that God has reserved uh, for us and for others. And so we see in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, we see God has heaven reserved for us. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to, 3 to 5. And it says here, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us, saved us here, uh, again unto a lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Here it goes. To an inheritance, this is what we get when we get saved, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, what? Reserved in heaven for you. And when you get saved, you have a reservation. You're going to heaven. You're going there. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last times. So the wonderful verse that God has reserved heaven for the redeemed. Now, hang a right and go back to chapter 2 of 2 Peter. So we have the negative side, not heaven but also of hell, is reserved, it says here, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse uh, number 4. And it says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be, what? Reserved, Reserved unto judgment. So we have the, talking about the wicked and about hell. And verse 17 goes on about this. 2.17, uh, 2 Peter these, talking about false teachers, false preachers, false prophets, 2.17 of 1 Peter, I mean 2 Peter. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is what? Reserved forever. So 3.7, lastly here, uh, 3.7 tells us, about the reservation for the wicked and for hell. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, what? Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So heaven is reserved for you who are kept by the power of God. And hell and even the wicked angels have a place reserved just for them. Now, if you hang a right a few pages, go to the little book of Jude. It tells us about more false prophets and the reservations that are made that God has some things. We shouldn't forget this. We're watching our nation and the world get more wicked and more open about it, and we become the enemies of society. Now, in Jude, verse 6, it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under uh, 
darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Verse 13, Jude 13, says these false prophets here, just like Peter talked, Jude taught the same thing. These are false prophets or false Christian preachers, raising waves of the sea, foaming at their own shame, wandering stars to whom is what? Reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And as Brother Cyrus had taught about the black fire of hell. And, uh, you know, they're starting to drill, baby drill, not for oil, but now for geothermal heat, for energy for the earth. They're going as far down as they can go. I mean, miles and miles and miles to try to bring up energy because they know it's in the middle. It is a molten middle of the earth. And, uh, and it ain't going nowhere. It's reserved. You say, well, I just... Well, heaven and I, everything in the Bible is hard to believe because you start with uh, miracles from the front of the Bible to the end of the Bible. So if you don't believe one miracle, guess what? You can't believe any of them. And if you believe one, you can believe them all. I mean, that's just our choice. But it's by faith that we're saved. We know how if you obey the Bible, it turns it on and it works for you. Or if you don't read the Bible, guess what? It still turns on and works against you. So we, that's why we know we're saved. And the Bible does what it says it's going to do for thousands of years. Another great verse is uh, Job 21.30. We have a couple more to look at and then we'll move on. In the uh, book of Job, Job is speaking here. In 21 verse 30, and a uh, great verse of that being things that are reserved. So Job here is giving an answer to one of the critics. And he says in uh, 2130 of Job that the wicked is what? The wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. And he goes on and explains the unfortunate end of the wicked man without without God. So uh, now the, the illustrated story we'll see three times is in Luke 16, the rich man in hell and Lazarus. Go there, we'll move on. So the 16th chapter of Luke gives us a picture of the reserved heaven, the reserved hell, the reserved wicked, and the reserved uh, saints. It's all about Luke 16. And we'll look at first 20, verse 26 about these two places that are reserved in Luke 16, verse 26. And so we see Abraham's talking to the rich man who is in hell. And so Abraham says, And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf, what? It's fixed. It's, fixed. It, it's just not going anywhere. A great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So these two compartments, one these days was called paradise, and the other is Hades, all right? Later they'll be called hell and heaven, and be called the lake of fire at the end of the Bible. So the thing we need to understand is that God has several things reserved, and don't forget it, amen? That's what it's about, stirring up our pure minds, that everybody we meet is either going to heaven or they're going to hell. I was able to talk to the neighbors yesterday across the street, a young mother over there, and uh, she, she told me, she said, I got saved five years ago. And uh, that was good to get her to, she st stayed up and, and talked with me in the streets about automobiles and stuff and her kids. And hopefully we may be able to get uh, them in church. I never thought Braylon Bella would have an interest, but he's a member of our church now. Isn't that, that's a miracle. You know, you just have to have time to talk to people. They, if they can find a place where they will stop and just chit chat a while. That's the way it used to be. You knock on the door. I used to when I got saved, they said, "Well, yeah, won't you come in?" I mean, and guess what? When that stopped, when big screen TVs came into the homes and cable came out, uh, and people didn't watch in their homes anymore, 
you were interrupting their entertainment and the, the, the vile stuff that they were now watching, uh, X-rated stuff in their homes. And so you became the enemy after sin uh, took over America. So we have to remember that these places are reserved and secondly, so we uh, remember that God has his people preserved. We have places, things that are reserved, but we have God's people that are preserved. And uh, remember that God will keep our reservations safe for us. For instance, let's say you made a reservation at a fancy restaurant or a golf course or whatever. Now, it's up to you to keep that reservation or cancel that re reservation. Salvation is not like that. It is not up to us. Once we are saved and we're going to heaven, we just saw we are kept by the power of God. We will keep that reservation because of our preservation. Amen. Springfield is filled with people who think they're going to lose the salvation if they don't do this or that, do this or that or that or this. They're not born again people, or they are, and are stupid because their pastors or their churches don't teach preservation. Right. They teach salvation, but then they say, but the rest is up to you. We're going to keep our reservation. Let's look and see what the Bible says. Go back to Jude real quick. A few verses here. So God has several things reserved, heaven, hell, the wicked, the angels. And, but God also, remember, we must remember God has his people preserved, those that have been born again. Jude starts off with this very word about the, the saved people. Now Jude, it says in verse 1, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified, how do they get sanctified? By God, the Father, and what else? Preserved. Preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. That's a picture of salvation in verse 2, isn't it? Right. That's good. So we're sanctified by God and we are preserved by God and we will keep our reservation by God. Oh, yeah. We are kept by the power of God. Now 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 goes on. Uh, we are body, soul, and spirit. Some fancy saying is uh, we are a trichotomous person by, uh, by body, soul, and spirit. But it tells us this in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, just before it closes the book. And uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, about preservation, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. So who sanctifies you? Even in this verse, it tells you God. The God of peace sanctify you wholly, that your whole being. And I pray God your what? Whole spirit and what? Whole soul and what else? And your body, but what's the next one? Be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful, how are you going to do it? It says, God, look at 24. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Amen. Amen. I mean, that nails it to the floor. I mean, body, soul, and spirit. It is God that does it all. We just simply repent and surrender to God. Right. We're bought with a price. We're not our own. How, so how do you go about losing your salvation since you don't belong to yourself anymore? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people like the thought of working their way to heaven. They can pat themselves on the back, you know, how good I am, and end up in hell if they're not careful. Job 10, 12 also tells us about preservation. Uh, Job 10, 12, we were in 21 just now. But Job is speaking here also about preservation. Job 10 and verse 12. And he is so glad that God preserves him. Thou hast granted me life, 
and grace, which is favor here. So Job says, God, thou hast granted me life and favor in thy visitation, in other words, when I met you, thy visitation hath done what? Preserve my spirit. Amen. So in, even in the Old Testament, now Job is not the first book in the front of our Bible. Genesis is, but Job is the oldest historical book around, oh, today would be 3,520 years ago, approximately, when they say this was written, which is uh, a long time ago, 3,500 years, and this is what he said. God saved me, God preserved me when he visited me. How many remember when you got saved and you and God, he visited with you? Amen. And he's never left. Right. He's, he comes and said, I think I'll stay there a while, like forever. Now Psalm 37, 28, hang a right a few pages. Psalm, a couple more here. Psalm 37, 28. And David is teaching this preservation and salvation in the Old Testament. This was written uh, oh, at least a thousand years before Jesus was born. So that'd be 3,000 years ago. 37 and verse number 28. It says, For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints, David said. Read it with me, the rest of it. They are preserved forever. The seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Their salvation is the same as our salvation. By faith in the Messiah. By repenting before God of their evil wickedness that the sins are stacked against us. I like this. So he's reserved things, but he has preserved us. He has made sure we will keep our reservation. Lastly, look over in uh, here, Luke 16 again, we'll see the other part of that story contains this preservation as well. So Luke 16, as we move to our third point in just a moment, Luke 16, 19, and uh, so there the story begins, and so we see the preservation of Lazarus in the story. There was a certain rich man, 1619 of Luke, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. He ate the best, had the best, bought the best, wore the best, fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. <clears throat> and let's move on to... Uh, Verse 23, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. Now that sounds like a pretty bad lifestyle. It sounds like a real homeless person, doesn't it? Not a fake one like we have to deal with in the neighborhood. We just, uh, Deborah found three debit cards up out on the, by the steps here and getting was it yesterday morning she was patrolling the parking lots and uh, I, I, I tracked down the lady on those three cards and uh, her name was Michelle Lambeth she lives here and just so happened she had a Facebook page that I was able to pull up and uh, saw that she had been through quite a bit of hardships but she was a pretty hard person and uh, but found out a lot about her you know, when you put stuff online, guess what? Uh, it, it's never coming off. Somebody's going to always have that information. So she had has had twins, and she her her oldest son just died of COVID uh, about a year ago at 17 years of age. Spent 36 days in the hospital in St. Louis. And, but anyway, I, I I sent her a message. She called me on my I looked at my phone number. And, she said, my wallet was stolen uh, two weeks ago. And somebody found a couple of cards somewhere else and called me, tracked me down. And she said, and now you call, I'm so happy. But she said, just shred the cards because I, I really 
And I'll tell you who did it. She told me the guy's name, what he looks like. And uh, she's going through some hard times now, so pray, pray for her if you would, Michelle. But the, the homeless people, they're camping out everywhere. They're, they're every, in every nook and cranny. Well, that's not what Lazarus did. They wouldn't allow that back there in the Jewish culture to just, you might be a leper, but you were not allowed to just be a bum. You could be a beggar, but you had to be a legitimate beggar, not somebody that holds a sign up on the side of the road so they can get a fifth of whiskey or some meth or something. We had a family come through, a, a mother the other day, knocking on the door, and uh, it was a young man, maybe in his 30s, and his mother was an older lady, and they were traveling from Cape Girardeau to Oklahoma City because they had been made to leave the shelter because they had black mold in the building. They condemned it. And she has bad health, and I spent some time with them, and they were legitimately poor. That's who I'm looking for, is the legitimately poor person like Lazarus here, okay? But they're, they're I mean, they're, they're so hard to find because most people are just dishonest crooks or addicted to alcohol and they will cheat you, they will do everything they can to survive themselves. They'll use you as a rung on the ladder. I've been here a while, you know, almost 36 years. And uh, there are people that are ladder climbers that come in only to get something to go where they want to go. And they don't know where they're going, but you're, you're one of the rungs on the ladder to get where they don't know where they're going. And so anyway, I brought the young man in and took him to our room with some food and I chose out stuff with pop tops on the cans and stuff. And I took him down here and filled the car with gas and I gave him some emergency money so they could get to shelters in Oklahoma City. It's called the Je Jesus something or another, Jesus House, I think they said. They were familiar with that, so they were going back to Oklahoma. And, uh, but I was glad, you know, I, I was happy. Guess what? They were happy. I had prayer with them. They were so thankful, said they were saved people. Once in a while, that's rare. You know, that was, that's ministry is what that is. This thing here with the credit cards thrown everywhere and theft, I said, that, that depresses you. It, 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 you lose faith in humankind, it, it, knowing somebody's, uh, on, and they're everywhere, all across America. I'm glad I'm not in New York and L.A., amen or Boston, any of these liberal cities that allow crime and filth on the streets. Well, that wasn't Lazarus. He was a legitimately poor beggar. And what I'm getting at, he had no way to keep his reservation on his own. God did that because Lazarus was preserved in the Messiah. And here it is, Jesus teaching the very story himself. 22, came to pass that the beggar died it doesn't say he's a bum, a uh, beggar, and he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, the rich man, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. And uh, we'll pick up that in the next last point. So the rich man here was reserved for judgment. The wicked will be reserved. Hell is reserved. So that choice to, to get to hell was his choice. He didn't have God preserve him. He turned God away and he, he kept his own reservation. It was all up to him, not up to God. But Lazarus, the beggar, he was totally surrendered to the mercy of God. And God had reserved heaven for him and preserved him and made sure he got there. And he's there because that's what the story is all about, is it not? One's in heaven and one is in hell. Well, lastly, so we remember that God has several things reserved that are not going to change. And then we find, secondly, we must remember that God has his people preserved so they can keep that reservation. Now, thirdly, uh, while you're in Luke, look at verse 13. So th we must remember third that God says we must choose whom we will serve. Now that we have reservations, now that we are preserved, we must remember that we're here to serve. 
We're not here to play around. We're not here to set up a legacy to be remembered. Or a kingdom or some, I want people to remember me. I don't think Abraham, uh, I mean, uh, Thomas Edison or who, uh, Graham Bell or George Washington Carver or Booker T. Washington or Robert E. Lee. I don't think any of those people said, I want people to know who I am. I think they were men who wanted to serve society and most of them were Christian men that loved the Lord. I know Booker T. Washington, uh, George Carver was especially, it's in his own testimony at his park down here in Diamond, Missouri. So we must serve, don't forget, we must choose whom we will serve. And Jesus tells us, says before he starts the this is the reason why he taught the, the story on hell is this verse here, verse 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Isn't it something we've had Christians uh, seemingly serve in the churches for years, and then later on they just quit? And then it's not that they quit or don't go to church, it's that they badmouth Christians after that. That is as wicked as it gets. That is total blasphemy. How can people spend years and years in church and all of a sudden start speaking evil of God's work and God's people? Well, that's just a sign they're not going to heaven. For, for people that name the name of Christ to condemn all the churches and the gospel. That just tells you they're coming out of the closet for who they really are and I have always been. So he says you can't serve two masters, so it's heaven or hell, or God and the devil. Now let's pick up verse 23 of that story. We left off at 23. So we see here, talking about serving, he's going to remind the rich man about his chance to serve. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cries, said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus. Now, you would think he would say, get me out of here. He doesn't say that. He just said, send a drop of water by Lazarus. He didn't need Lazarus before. He needs him now. But he knows he's not he's never coming out. He knows this. He's not coming out of the blackness of darkness forever. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of tip, the tip of look at the tip of your finger there. That's not very big. A drop. Cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, you had the chance. Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime, all your life, you receive thy good, receivest the good things, likewise Lazarus, his whole life, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Look at 27. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, thou would send him, if you can't send it to me, send it to my five brothers, is what he says here. <clears throat> Father's house, for I have five brethren that they, he may testify unto them. They want to hear it now. Well, they don't, but he, he wants them to testify. Lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. They got, a, they got the scriptures. Let them hear them. Hear the scriptures. And he said, Nay. Well, see, he's still rebellious. He's in hell, but he's still rebellious. He's telling you might say, God, no, no, my way, my way, my way. He said, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went, so he's, he's rewriting the plan of God. He's going to tell God, or Abraham here is God's representative, he's going to tell him how it should be. That's, that's why he's in hell anyway, a rebellion. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. 
It's like it's a fact. I mean, you're, you're teaching God the facts now. And he said unto him, Jesus said unto Abraham, If they hear not the Bible, the real Bible, not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So miracles are a false, false fact, you might say. People trust miracles all over. This is the headquarters of the assemblies of God and, you know, the city of the miraculous. And so many have trusted miracles or a sign or a wonder or, or whatever, thinking that they're going to heaven because they had, uh, you know, healing from cancer or, or some disease. So they just assume, I've talked to people like that. Well, back a few years ago, God healed me, so I know me and God got something going on here. Just some flimsy excuse. And so now let's get ready to close out. Joshua 24, Joshua 24, about serving the Lord. So God has several things reserved. God has his people <coughs> preserved so we can keep our reservation. And then God says we must choose whom we will serve. And that's exactly what Joshua says here. Verse 14, 24, 14 of Joshua. Now therefore fear the Lord and, and do what? Serve, serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve, serve. Notice all through here. Serve ye the Lord. If it seem, if you don't want to do it, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom you will serve. Preserve, preserve, and serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, what? We will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, which did those great signs in our sight and preserved, see there it is, preserved us in all the way where we went, among all the people through whom we passed. The Lord drave out before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore, will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions, nor your sins. And he goes on. Two more verses. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt. So, think of backslidden Christians. Just think how much better your life would be if you could backslide and go live in sin. What? That's why we don't, we know. That is a dead end street, isn't it? He will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, read it with me, but we will serve the Lord. That's what we need to remember. We must always be in gear to serve the Lord. We are preserved. We have a place reserved. And you're never happier until you just get busy serving God. Leave a track, a good word. Just, just try to serve God. And uh, be faithful to what the Bible has to say. Last verse, Hebrews 12, 28, we're gone. One verse or two here. Hebrews chapter 12. Now the 12th chapter of Hebrews, most of it's on chastisement. It talks about Isaac and Esau and uh, Jacob, but especially the chastisement uh, on Esau. But it ends the 12th chapter, verse 28 29. So we're reminded here, remember, 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 wherefore we receiving a kingdom, which what? 
cannot be moved. So how do you lose your salvation? It's reserved, and you're preserved. Knowing that we have <coughs> received a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace. Dear God, I need you. That's what grace is. God, I need, I need a few favors here. Let us have grace whereby we may, what? Serve. Serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. We serve God because we love God, not because we think he's got a baseball bat or a gun. We serve him because what he has done and given us happiness and blessings the Lord and more to come. Even, even when we have fits of downtime, depression, and worry, just remember tomorrow can be the best blessing day of our life. God can interrupt our misery if we let him. You know, that's what we've been talking about. When people say, God bless you, well, just tell them, say, well, he will if I let him. God will bless us if we will let him. We're the only thing that stops him from blessing us. So, Lord, we thank you that this morning you tried to stir up our pure mind by way of remembrance. So help us now to go out and serve the Lord with gladness. We know this word is used hundreds and hundreds of times in the scriptures. And it's not a lazy word. It's not an inactive word. It's a very, very great verb word. It's always in gear. So help us now to just, even in our elder years, find ways to further serve the Lord now. And save anybody that's not preserved uh, by the blood of Christ. We pray if they watch the film. Uh, we pray now for those here among us. Make sure we know we're saved, born again, on our way to heaven. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Let's all stand, if you would, and turn to page number 291. 291, stirring up our pure minds by way of remembrance. We have a great job ahead of us, but God will make sure we get it done. 291. Yeah.